So the next lab where we would have cyclohexanol, cyclohexanol, I'm having trouble drawing this, um, into cyclohexanone, make sure it's completely closed, and we are using sodium dichromate, and we are going to use H2SO4. We are going to use, we are going to do this on a micro scale, and the reason for that is that a lot of the material that we are going to use is toxic, so you must make sure that you wear gloves. That's like mandatory at all times. Um, dichromate is a suspected carcinogen, H2SO4. You guys know that, that is a corrosive acid. And if you inhale the cyclohexanol vapors, like, you know, too much, then um, it can act as an irritant for your eyes and your nose passages as well. So please make sure that you do not get a whiff of the starting material, the product, you know, the general uh, safety things that we always pay attention to, and you should be fine. Okay, so also we are going to you, uh, do this lab on a very small scale uh, so that we don't expose uh, ourselves. Understand that the corrosive behavior also has got to do with what kind of dosage, what kind of exposure we get. So we are going to minimize that and we'll make sure that none of the waste goes in the effluent, in the water line, but rather uh, it is put down appropriately. Okay, so two things you will start with a large test tube. You're going to charge it with a, a stir bar. You're going to put about two, this is really about two grams of ice, could be 2.5 five not a problem but do weigh it out um, it's kind of hard sometimes to see how many specks of ice uh, make that that that, that mass uh, so approximately two grams of ice and you're going to add to that um, concentrated h2so4 we are going to take 35 drops small drops and you should consider using um, a, a glass pipette for this so just the one with the blue um, uh, dropper um, and so now you have added H2SO4 so you're going to stir it so it becomes nice and warm as it sees the water in the ice it's going to start melting because there will be heat that will be generated as the hydronium ion gets generated um, and we want to uh, make sure that this is nice and cold so it's also a good idea that A we clamp it, B there is a thermometer um, adapter or thermometer clamps rather and you have your thermometer in there so that you maintain the temperature at all times. The thermometer we are going to use should be the glass thermometer, not the metal thermometer for obvious reasons. Um, let's uh, then consider we are going to uh, make sure that the temperature is less than 25 and that's pretty easy to do if we are maintaining it in an ice bath ice bath okay um we are going to then add our alcohol and i would just encourage you to use the micro pipette you have to take 502 microliters of the cyclohexanol and slowly just very slowly add that into your test tube I would uh, say whenever you don't know uh, what at what rate you should do the addition, it's a good idea to just go slow and just add drop, 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 so you can kind of monitor that and make sure that you continuously stir that so you have a nice, um, a, a nice uh, uh, dispersal of the materials. Um, and as you have, as you have your um, alcohol in this acid and ice broth, we are going to now charge this with the oxidizing agent. So make sure your temperature is less than 25 and we should be good to move further. So now what we will do is we are going to take another tube. So I'm going to just make that in red so that you remember. And this could be a medium sized tube. You're going to take about 0.55 grams of the sodium dichromate. And you're going to add to that 750 microliters of water. 
This water obviously should be the doubly distilled water, so it comes from your blue bottles. Um, and it will all dissolve. So once it has dissolved, you would then take that out and you would, you would add to your um, reaction broth. So that's what you would add uh, as the last thing, again, drop-wise. So again, uh, drop Mississippi, drop Mississippi, that slow addition is an important thing to do. As you have done the addition, it will probably take you approximately about five minutes or so to do the addition. It's a relatively small volume, but if you go drop by drop uh, with continuous stirring, it should take you approximately four to five minutes to do the complete ad addition. After you have done the addition, you should then remove the ice bath. Okay, so after we have done that, we are going to remove the ice bath. And now we will let um, our reaction stir. So we are going to let our reaction stir. Um, and we will let that run for about 20 minutes or so. During this time, you will see that your temperature, the moment you remove the ice bath, your temperature will go from maybe it was 10 degrees uh, or so it will start to rise and it will go all the way to probably around like 40 or so. You don't want to let it go past 40, 45. If that happens to, if that starts to happen, then you should consider keeping your ice bath handy just in case you need to recool it. But uh, typically it will go up to somewhere around 38 to 40 or so and then it will start dropping back again. So there is an exothermic reaction that happens during this time you will see that that orange color that you started with, that color will start to darken. And as it darkens, you're going to get kind of like a very dark uh, brown color. Almost, it is so dark, it's kind of difficult to say whether it's brown or green, um, but um, uh, it, it, it would not be orange for sure. And that just tells you that as the reaction is taking place, then majority of your product is going to uh, uh, essentially get formed. And as the alcohol undergoes, uh, oxidation, the chromium is going to go from chromium plus six to chromium plus three, and chromium plus three is green in color. Okay, so that's why that orange green that's happening. So all of this will happen within the 20 minute uh, period that I'm talking about. You will see that it'll go up to 40 and then automatically, you don't have to do anything, it will start to fall back down and eventually it will, you know, come up to room temperature. And this whole thing happens within uh, 20, 20 minutes or so. Um, at the end of 20 minutes, I want you to quench the reaction. So quenching can be done with oxalic acid. We will just put about 100 milligrams of oxalic acid into our reaction vessel. So what happens is that oxalic acid takes care of any uh, excess dichromate that might be present, that might be left over. Um, and itself undergoes oxidation to give you carbon dioxide and reduces everything else, um, everything else meaning all the dichromate, um, it, it, it uh, reduces that and you see, you start seeing this very clear uh, green color. Now, um, turns out that our product actually has, um, the density of that is very similar to uh, to water. So we can't just, um, uh, you know, get the layer of our product. You will be able to see a somewhat oily layer, but it's kind of difficult to get that. So the best way to uh, get it out is either by salting out or by um, extracting it out. And so we will use the extraction method that we have done in the past. So what you will do is you will add um, two lots of two lots of ethyl acetate, 10 milliliters at a time. So that means total, it will be 20 milliliters that you need. And uh, you will extract your aqueous layer twice. You will consolidate uh, all the organic layers uh, together. So let me just very quickly, sh um, uh. so you will take your separatory funnel I'm just doing a recap from organic one. You guys know this. You're going to dump in your reaction mixture. 
and you're going to add a 10 milliliters of ethyl acetate. You will shake it, shake went, shake went. You will do that maybe three times, uh, the shaking and venting. And you will see that uh, because ethyl acetate has a definitely uh, different uh, density, what it does is that it picks up your uh, product and uh, the chromium salts will remain in water and uh, you will be able to see the two layers form up. And so you're going to drain your aqueous layer, which is the bottom layer. The ethyl acetate layer is going to be on top and you're going to collect that ethyl acetate layer in a flask. Okay. Um, the flask that you used for the aqueous one, so pour that back one more time. So pour that back again one more time into your SEP funnel and add another 10 milliliters of ethyl acetate and do the same thing one more time. Again, um, you can get rid of the aqueous layer that will go into the waste and the ethyl acetate layer that should be mixed with the previous ethyl acetate layer. So total you can envision you will have 20 milliliters of ethyl acetate which hopefully would have uh, dissolved your cyclohexanone. You're now going to uh, subject that to a desiccant and our desiccant would be magnesium sulfate. Uh, so you will add pinches of magnesium sulfate. This could be approximately 500 milligrams or so. You don't have to weigh it out again. You have to add swirl, add swirl till the time some of the product kind of sticks at the bottom and some moves with the movement of uh, your materials. And at that point of time, you will transfer that into a pre-weighed round bottom flask and we will then rotary evaporate. As you rotary evaporate, your ethyl acetate will be removed and what will remain will be your product. You will take a mass of that because you have to determine the percentage yield. You will do a chemical test on that and the chemical test in question is going to be the 2,4-DNP test to make sure that um, we have the carbonyl. Uh, we will also do an IR, so we will compare the IR of the starting material and the product to make sure that we have um, a carbonyl peak that we see, um, and that will be it. Temperature is really important in this lab because if you allow the temperature to go further, the ketone can uh, get tautomerized into the enol and that will subject, that will open doors for um, another reaction, which will be oxidation of that double bond to get the uh, adipic acid, essentially, and we don't want that to happen. So it's really important that we keep the temperatures uh, lower. We don't heat it at any given point of time and things of that nature. Never allow the, um, the reaction to go beyond like 40, 45 degrees Celsius. Um, and that's it. Good luck.